Today, we will talk about the courses and headings in air navigation, the part 2, since in the previous video we talked about how direction is measured on Earth, and we saw the concepts of true course, magnetic variation, and magnetic course. In this second part we will look at the wind correction angle, true and magnetic heading, compass deviation, and compass heading, along with some practical examples. So without any further ado, let's start by looking at the effect of wind. If during flight there is a crosswind, it will push the aircraft out of the route. In this example, here we have the desired course, and we can see how a crosswind from the left pushes the aircraft off course. In this case, the actual path that an aircraft follows over the ground is known as track. And the angle between the desired course and the actual track is known as drift angle. Now, the question is, how can we solve this situation so that the aircraft stays on course? Well, to do so, we have to make the nose of the aircraft point slightly into the wind to correct the drift and maintain the desired course. Now, something important to note here is that the direction in which the nose points is different from the course. So to distinguish the course and the direction in which the nose of the aircraft is pointing, we have the concept of heading. The heading is basically the direction to which the nose of the aircraft is pointing, and it can be measured in relation to true north or in relation to magnetic north. If this heading is measured in relation to true or geographic north, then it is called true heading, which is abbreviated as TH, and is defined as the angle between true north and the heading of the aircraft. On the other hand, if the heading is measured in relation to magnetic north, then it is called magnetic heading, which is abbreviated as MH, and is defined as the angle between magnetic north and the heading of the aircraft as we can see in these examples. Now, apart from these concepts of heading, there is another one which is related to the drift angle that we saw before, and it is the wind correction angle, which is abbreviated as WCA. This is the angle between the desired course and the heading of the aircraft. This angle can be calculated by means of a flight computer or by making a wind triangle. However, we will not deal with these methods in this video, since for this explanation it is only necessary to know the basic concept of wind correction angle. Now, as we already know, the wind can strike the aircraft from any direction. So in this case, we are only interested in knowing if the wind will push the aircraft to the right or to the left of the route. This way, if the wind comes from the left, it will push the aircraft to the right of the route, while if the wind comes from the right, it will push the aircraft to the left. Now, in the event of a direct headwind or tailwind, it will affect the ground speed, but not the track so the aircraft will remain on course. So with this being said, it is important to mention that the wind correction angle can be positive or negative depending on the situation. As a general rule, when the wind comes from the left, the wind correction angle will be negative. Let's see why. Here we have the desired course of 0 9 or 0 degrees. In this case, if there is no wind, there is no need to correct for drift, so the heading would also be 0 9 or 0. Now, if there is a crosswind from the left, the nose of the aircraft will have to point slightly into the wind to correct the drift, let's say to heading 0 8 0. As we can see then, the wind correction angle in this case is 10 degrees, but since the current heading is less than the desired course, then we say that the wind correction angle is negative. And this will always happen when we have a crosswind from the left. On the other hand, if the wind comes from the right, the wind correction angle will be positive. In this example we have the same desired course of 0 9 or 0. So if in this case there is a crosswind from the right, the nose of the aircraft will have to point slightly into the wind to correct the drift, let's say to heading 100. In this case, the wind correction angle is again 10 degrees. However, since the current heading is greater than the desired course, then we say that the wind correction angle is positive. In summary then, if we are using the true north as reference, then the true heading will be equal to the true course plus or minus the wind correction angle. And as we previously mentioned, if the wind comes from the left, then the wind correction angle is negative, and if it comes from the right, then it is positive. 
On the other hand, if we are using the magnetic north as reference, then the magnetic heading will be equal to the magnetic course plus or minus the wind correction angle. And again, if the wind comes from the left then the angle is negative, and if it comes from the right, it is positive. With all this in mind, let's summarize all the concepts related to courses and headings we have seen so far. Here, we can see the true course, which is the angle between true north and the course. We also have the magnetic course, which is the angle between magnetic north and the course. There is also the magnetic variation, which is the angle between true and magnetic north. We have the true heading, which is the angle between true north and the heading. The magnetic heading, which is the angle between magnetic north and the heading. And finally, there is the wind correction angle, which is the angle between the desired course and the heading of the aircraft. Now, although this may seem confusing, there is still one more concept that we need to look at, and it is the compass deviation. As we already know, any nearby electromagnetic interference will cause the compass to deviate and give an erroneous indication. For example, here the compass is pointing directly to magnetic north, which would be an ideal situation. However, let's say that a nearby magnetic interference induces the needle of the compass to deviate and then point to a new north. This new north to which the compass points is known as compass north, and we will abbreviate it as NC. All of this results in a new angle, known as the deviation angle, which is defined as the angle between magnetic north and compass north. In other words, this is the angle between where the compass should point and where it actually points to. Now, it is important to mention that this angle is not always the same, since it will depend on each aircraft and the heading it is flying. For example, in a small aircraft the strongest magnetic interference is caused by the engine and by the radio and avionics equipment. Therefore, the compass deviation will depend on the position of the engine and the avionics in relation to magnetic north, which will change depending on the heading. Fortunately, the interference produced by the different components of the aircraft can be measured and corrected for each heading. However, there are another sources of magnetic interference, such as cell phones and other portable electronic devices that may be aboard the aircraft. Now, up to this point you might be wondering, how do we know how large is the compass deviation for a particular aircraft and heading? Well, for that, there is the compass deviation card, which includes compass deviation information for the different headings. In this example as we can see, in the upper row we find the desired magnetic heading, while in the lower row we find the corrected heading to be used, taking into account the compass deviation. Therefore, by definition, the difference between these two values will be the deviation angle. Normally this card is located next to the compass, so that it is easily visible to the pilot. Let's now see more in detail how to use this card. As we just said before, in the upper row we find the desired magnetic heading, while in the lower row we find the corrected heading to be used. In other words, we can say that in the upper row we find the heading in relation to the actual magnetic north, while in the lower part we find the corresponding heading in relation to compass north. For example with this card, if we want to fly with a north heading, which is 0 degrees, we have to fly with our compass indicating heading 005. This means that in this case the compass deviation is plus 5 degrees. In this order of ideas, if we want to fly with heading 09 or 0, we have to fly with a compass indication of 088, which means that in this case the deviation is minus 2 degrees. For heading 180 the deviation is 0 degrees, and for heading 270 the deviation is plus 2 degrees. Now, sometimes the compass deviation may be expressed in terms of east or west, instead of plus or minus. In that case we apply the same rule as with the magnetic variation, east is least and west is best. Now, having seen all this, we can now look at the concept of compass heading, which is abbreviated as CH, and is defined as the angle between compass north and the heading of the aircraft. This means that this is the heading to be used as reference for navigation, 
Since it is the heading we must follow with the compass to maintain the desired course having applied all the necessary corrections for magnetic variation, wind, and compass deviation. So with all this in mind, let's see a summary of all the concepts we have seen. Here we can see the deviation angle, the magnetic variation, the wind correction angle, the true course, the magnetic course, the true heading, the magnetic heading, and finally, the compass heading. Now that we are clear about all these concepts, let's see how they are applied in practice. As we already said, the final objective is to determine the compass heading. So initially, using the navigation chart and a plotter, we can determine the true course and the magnetic variation. Then, using the compass deviation card of the aircraft, we can determine the deviation angle. And finally, we can calculate the wind correction angle using the winds aloft forecasts as reference. So, with this initial information and using these formulas, we can determine the compass heading. Let's see how to do it with the following example. Given the following initial data, we have to determine the compass heading for AB and BC. Here we have the VFR navigation chart, a plotter, the compass deviation card of the aircraft we will fly, and the wind correction angles for the respective legs. Now, in a real scenario, we would have to calculate the wind correction angles manually using a flight computer or a wind triangle. However, since we haven't explained how to do so, we will use these generic angles directly for the explanation. With that being said, let's determine the true courses and the magnetic variation using the navigation chart and the plotter. In this case, to measure the true courses we can use these meridians as reference, and using the plotter we measure the angle between the meridians and the courses. Which in this case is 122 for AB and 060 for BC. Then we look for the nearest isogonic line for each leg and determine that for AB, the magnetic variation will be 3 degrees east, while for BC, it will be 4 degrees east. Now that we know the true courses and the wind correction angles, we can determine the true headings, which can be calculated using this formula. In this case, for AB, the true heading would be 117, while for BC the true heading would be 065. Then, knowing the true headings and the magnetic variation, the magnetic headings can be determined using this other formula. In this case, for AB the magnetic heading would be 114, while for BC it would be 061. And finally, with the magnetic headings and using the compass deviation card, we can now determine the compass headings. For AB, since the magnetic heading is 114, we can use 120 as reference in the compass deviation card, which results in a deviation angle of 0 degrees. In other words, this means that the magnetic heading and compass heading will be the same, resulting in a compass heading of 114. Now, for the leg BC, since the magnetic heading is 061, we use 060 as reference in the compass deviation card, which results in a deviation angle of minus 2 degrees, and therefore, the compass heading would be 059er. Now, to understand better all this headings and courses for each leg, let's look at the respective graphic representations. Here we can see that for leg AB, we have a true course of 122, a wind correction angle of minus 5, a true heading of 117, a magnetic variation of 3 degrees east, a magnetic heading of 114, and since the deviation angle is 0 degrees, the compass heading is also 114. Now, although here we did not calculate the magnetic course, it would be 119er. Now, it is important to remember that the heading to be used as reference for navigation in this leg is the compass heading of 114. On the other hand, for the leg BC, the true course is 060, the wind correction angle is plus 5, the true heading is 065, the variation is 4 degrees east, the magnetic heading is 061, the deviation is minus 2, and the compass heading is 059er. Now, again, if we want to calculate the magnetic course, it would be 056 in this case. Again, the heading to be used as reference in this leg is the compass heading of 059er. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. 
If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.